Welcome to the latest of our Facebook Live uh, sessions uh, that I, uh, the uh, Peace and Crime Commissioner for West Mercia, have been holding uh, with the West Mercia Police Local Policing Superintendents. Um, my name, as I uh, said, is uh, John Campion as, as Commissioner. I act as the governance for West Mercia Police. I represent the public's views into uh, the strategic direction for uh, the police through something called the Safer West Mercia Plan. I hold the force to account for delivering uh, that plan. I provide the budget and I support and challenge them uh, in their work as they support and keep our communities safe. So I'm joined tonight uh, by uh, two colleagues. Firstly, uh, by Sue. Sue, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, good afternoon. Uh, Superintendent Sue Thomas and the Police Commander in Herefordshire. Thanks, Sue. And uh, just a little bit about your background and your, your role in Herefordshire. Yes, so uh, I'm the Police Commander here and I have the absolute pleasure on behalf of the Chief to lead policing across the county. Uh, it's a role I've had now for six years and uh, really, really proud of uh, the role and what we do here in Herefordshire. Um, so I've done a lot of my police service actually in Herefordshire, which, uh, which is good because it means that I can understand the communities and also all the partners that we work together. And uh, I think it's really important to say that we don't just police with police officers, we police the county with all our partners to, to make sure it is safe. So my experience pretty much has been, uh, all of it of which have been in West Mercia. Um, I have spent time in uh, Worcestershire as well, uh, in very early days of my career. And um, I've uh, been involved, I suppose, mostly in uniform with lots of different experience across operations as firearms commander, public order commander. But primarily, most of my work has been working with communities uh, and having had sort of, sort of what we call local geographic responsibility in various parts of Herefordshire many years ago. Uh, as I say, it gives me a good platform to, to understand everything that we do around Herefordshire. Um, I've also uh, got the Rural Crime Portfolio for the Force, uh, which is very important. Uh, I know PCC, that's very close to your heart and the communities that report uh, matters to you. Um, and um, I've also got the portfolio around our problem solving approach, which is very important when we consider how we solve problems with our communities. And finally, and, and really relevant at the moment, because I am the, the chair of a group called the Tactical Coordinating Group for Herefordshire, which is the, I'm sure we, we might talk, talk about that shortly, but it, it's a multi-agency group that comes together to look at how we deal uh, with emerging uh, threats and certain emergencies within the Civil Contingencies Act. And uh, this year we've had flooding and of course the ongoing COVID situation, and I chair that group. Excellent, and I know we'll get into that uh, very shortly. Uh, and uh, also joined with uh, by Tracy. Hi, good evening. My name's Tracy Onso. I'm Deputy Police and Crime Commissioner for West Mercia. Have been for four years. Um, obviously working for John, and I major on commissioning services for him. So um, services around uh, DA and uh, child criminal exploitation, etc. Um, and I do a lot of community engagement work. So meeting out with um, town councils, district councils, and uh, local groups. Thanks very much uh, to you both. So um, as Commissioner, one of my duties is to ensure that um, my work is connected with the public. Now, like many parts of our society, uh, what we would normally do has changed. And normally during the summer, um, Tracy and I, along with our staff supported by West Mercia Police, would be at many summer events across the force area, including in Herefordshire. I've uh, enjoyed such places as the Hereford Food Festival, the uh, Bromyard Steam Gala, uh, we've had uh, several uh, Shopton uh, food festival. Actually, there's a lot of food involved here, Tracy. <laughs> um, but uh, all those types of things aren't happening this summer for, for obvious reasons. So uh, this Facebook Live session is one of those ways that we can carry on uh, engaging with the public. So tonight's conversation will be uh, focused on Hereford. Um, we have asked the public for their questions and we have got some that will feature uh, during, uh, during the discussion. Um, but to start with, Sue, um, uh, we've, uh, we've seen this year, so not just COVID in, uh, in recent months, but this year be uh, an enormous challenge for uh, some communities in West Mercia and indeed in Herefordshire with some very serious flooding and then uh, the global uh, health emergency uh, that hasn't escaped uh, our community in Herefordshire either. Um, first of all, I'm interested in, in, in your views over um, coping with that over those two extended quite major instance and indeed the health one is still going on but also I'm interested in your view on how the police and the public working together especially as some of our 
freedoms have been challenged. You know, we can't go to the hairdressers at the moment, the pubs are closed. Um, we, we were under very stringent conditions until very recently. But interested in your views about that relationship and how it's changed or been challenged in recent times. Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, obviously, the COVID-19, the pandemic has been something that's completely unprecedented in policing and actually for society. So it has meant for us to be able to step up and to continue to, to service the, the, the communities of Herefordshire has been, has been a challenge. Um, and also there's been opportunities that's been presented there as well. Um, I think it's fair to say right from the outset, we set up a multi-agency uh, response to this at the very early stages, recognising you know, everybody had their part to play in this. And as I said earlier, I'm the chair of that multi-agency group. And we, we, we met initially every day. Uh, and then as the pandemic has progressed, um, it has started to, to, to ease off a little bit as we start to now look at what recovery and actually what res restoration of a new norm, a normality uh, looks like. Looks like. Um, but I think if we just take one step back and look at um, flooding early in the, in the year, that also was, uh, took a multi-agency response. And uh, some of the issues that got raised there were around the vulnerable. So we had a couple of uh, elderly care homes, for example, that got flooded. And then, and so we were able to bring into that multi-agency arena some of the partners that wouldn't traditionally be there. So of course the emergency services and some of the key partners around environmental health and um, uh, obviously for emergency duty planners. Um, but, but actually we brought to the table people around um, vulnerability uh, also from an adult's perspective. And that gives a really good platform as we progressed and got to it into trying to restore um, all our normality around flooding as we went into COVID. Because what was going to be quite obvious from what we've seen in other countries is as we progressed around COVID, at a certain point, the, 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 the wider community would start to, to sort of see those easing. But actually, and, and it's played out in Herefordshire, we do have a, an aging population, we have 81 care homes, now that has had a significant impact on our ageing community in Herefordshire. So to bring those people in at the early stages, to be part of a multi-agency approach, to understand how we were responding to COVID across the communities everywhere, but particularly now at the very end at stages of this phase around the vulnerability of the elderly people has been really, really critical. And to be fair, you know, we, we've, we've sat down, we've had a, a fixed agenda around how we can bring our personal protection equipment into the county, We've seen local businesses, um, PCC, really responding and stepping up the plate, changing their businesses overnight from, from gin making to producing hand sanitizer, which, is, you know, we've, we've smiled about how they could do that. It's gone through all the right channels, trade and standards, uh, through the health and safety, but they've been able to do that. And I think it's just one really good example of how all the community has pulled together to, 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 um, to respond to the challenge that's been faced with this around COVID. So um, it is really, it's really sad that we have ha um, we've had uh, 428 cases in total, um, probably a, um, a small amount of what we would have expected, but nevertheless 428 cases. And sadly, we have lost 125 people uh, across our county. And of course, uh, our thoughts, uh, both from a police perspective and the multi-agency approach are with the, the, the family and the friends of, of those people. Um, so we're not there yet. Of course, we've got more work to do, but uh, we're very much working now around the director of public health and the health arena, starting to really understand the outbreak management. We've started to see what's happened in Leicester uh, in terms of their very quick locking down. Um, you know, that has to be a real consideration, whether it be in Herefordshire or anywhere in West Mercia, that we might need to use those outbreak plans. But where we are at the moment, we have responded really well. We've been right up there in terms of uh, understanding around um, not nice subjects but how we plan for excess deaths and mortality planning how we work around our personal protection equipment um, the use of volunteers has been exemplary it's been absolutely great model with the talk community model um, and, and bringing together everybody to make sure that everybody's playing their part to be responsible uh, and maintain social distancing and we've we've uh, we've measured that we've, we've monitored it all the way through uh, and trying to say to people, we're doing all right here, but let's keep it on, let's be patient. And of course, we enter a new phase this weekend. I'm uh, just going to ask Tracy in a second around, uh, around volunteers and, and how we support our community to play their part. Um, and, and I absolutely agree with you, the, 
uh, innovation between the public uh, private sector and public service is fascinating and the fact that there are police officers policing in Herefordshire using hand sanitizer made by uh, you know one of the chase uh, distilleries within the county is uh, is quite a is quite an amazing feat uh, I, I've uh, I have smelt it it does smell of gin ironically though <laughs> I am reassured that it is uh, very good hand sanitizer but for me that is the way the community works it reacts it responds it, it adjusts um tracy um obviously one of our aims has been to support that community work out there and you've led on uh, ensuring that we've got an appropriate grant scheme out there so what kind of impact has that had on on herefordshire and the difference that it would, ma would have made to the communities uh, in the county well, looking at the um, the sort of response we've had back from people um, um, who have put in an application, and I think it's fair to say you were very quick to offer a, an amount of uh, funding, £50,000. And the rationale behind that was that um, people so quickly offered their time to go and help others. So um, across Herefordshire, we had people who were um, getting shopping, were getting prescriptions, delivering newspapers, taking dogs for a walk, um, as you know, across the whole of West Mercia, but Herefordshire um, as well. And uh, you were very keen that when people have offered their time so freely, it's not right that they're out of pocket as well. And it does take, you know, coordination around, as Sue mentioned earlier, um, PPE, there's printing to be done if you're getting cards out there. Um, people have got, um, you know, stationary costs and, and all sorts of little things. And um, we've probably spent just up to about the £50,000 now um, just picking up those costs. So people who've very freely given their time um, haven't been out of pocket as well. And I think the important message moving forward for us is that let's not use that community spirit now because everybody now knows who their neighbour neighbor is. And, and, you know, let's keep an eye on people moving forward. So um, obviously uh, the organisations... Uh, uh, working together to deal with some of these things from a strategic level what what kind of difference would have the communities on on the on the on the street have seen uh, during these two uh, recent events you know what would the difference they would have seen from their police service well from a police perspective um you'll be familiar with a model that we call mates which is a multi-agency targeted enforcement team we had such great success with that so the police on the ground working alongside um, a range of people from the local authority. So, for example, car parking charges went in Herefordshire. So, in terms of trying to enforce, uh, like the traffic wardens and the civil protection uh, team, etc., we pulled them all together on a, on a daily basis. The teams went out, um, really responding to intelligence. It was kind of, you know, where are the hot spots, where are the areas that people are telling us that are perhaps not complying with social distancing. And I have to say, great big thank you to the communities of Herefordshire. Because on, uh, you know, on the whole and in the main, everybody played their part in uh, being responsible and social distancing. But what we had to be really clear about, when those people weren't and they were causing us some concerns, we would we'd go along and, and obviously, as a team, uh, um, visible patrols every single day, just to explain to people, you know, engage with them, explain, encourage them to go home, because at the very early stages, that's what we're expecting people to do. And it was only then, as a last resort, we would do some enforcement with a fixed penalty notice. Now, we've actually uh, issued about 50, 50 or so uh, in, in the whole period of COVID. We've, you know, we've looked at those and we've said, are they appropriate in terms of what they were? Uh, actually, it's the highest in the force, but we've been really sure and really clear about our message. So people would have seen lots of uh, people on the ground enforcing social distancing. We've not been able to get to it, all, all of them, of course, but we've monitored the patterns and the themes. Um, and, and certainly, you know, when we've seen, unfortunately, kind of a cohort of uh, community around the 18 to 24, 25 year olds who, who traditionally have probably been the, the part of the community that are quite happy to be on their, their IT and tablets and phones. They're the people who've kind of wanted to be out and still meeting their friends. So we try to tailor some comms around those people just to say, look, play your part here. We really do need you, you, you to. To, um, to be really sure about staying at home and, and, um, and staying safe. So that's what people would have seen on the ground. Tracy, uh, I know you wanted to come in. Well, uh, only really to say that, you know, for, from a perspective of people at home, they might have sort of thought, well, you know, the so shops are shut, so there can't be any shoplifting um, going on. Uh, there's no cars on the road, so there can't be any speeding. Um, people aren't allowed out, so there can't be, uh, you know, too much antisocial behaviour. So they might have been wondering, Sue, what you've been doing if you've been having a nice time off over the last three months? 
I, I, yeah. It, it, uh, it, and it is uh, that, that's part of the question I, I'm interested in as we, as we move to, I was going to ask about uh, as, as, as things start to, to release, but it's, it's worth just touching on it now because whilst crime is down, that's not eradication of crime, is it? In, uh, during lockdown and others, we've seen, um, uh, we've seen traditional crime types have continued, just maybe not on the same sorts of level. And uh, you've had some really big successes in Herefordshire around things like um, uh, burglaries and, uh, and some of those types of traditional crimes. And so that ability to keep that emergency response and, and normal service going whilst dealing with the emergency has been quite an impressive sight to see. So, so moving on to, uh, moving on to uh, as we move to the next phase, so Saturday uh, we see some changes. Um, I'm looking forward uh, to when the pools reopen. They're not opening yet, unfortunately, though. No. Um, there are some people that will be looking forward to the hairdressers or, or, or other things, but there will be some that will be looking forward to the pub and the nighttime economy. Um, obviously, we've seen a dramatic reduction in violence associated with the nighttime economy in the last three months. Uh, uh, but as um, uh, the nighttime economy gets going again and other uh, parts of our um, liberty gets returned to us, what's your view of what will happen in Herefordshire and how will you manage that slowly easing of the restrictions that we've all been subject to for, for what feels like a very long time and sometimes the harm that's associated with some of those activities. Of course, yes. Yeah, obviously uh, July the 4th is a significant date in the calendar of Covid for us, it is the next phase. I think, I think we should be really pleased as a, as a county and, and as a nation that we've got to that, that point. Um, but of course it does mean that now that the police response needs to adapt and change from where we've been. So we haven't been quiet actually, you know, we've had lots of antisocial behaviour reported, you know, um, we've had, uh, you know, lots of things that go on in people's homes uh, that we've still had to respond to. So, so actually whilst demand has gone down, it's just been a slightly different demand. And now we know that the nighttime economy, which we would ordinarily police anyway in a very robust way, especially on a Friday, Saturday evenings, which is when our peak periods are. We just revisit those nighttime economy, economy plans. Um, but we've, we've absolutely made sure that this weekend uh, and certainly on Saturday is kind of like a, a New Year's Eve in July for us. We would put on something completely different at New Year's Eve because it just brought people out. And, and it's, I think it's fair to say we don't know what we're going to expect. We really don't. Um, but what we do know is that we're prepared because we've been planning for it. It's not just from a policing perspective. Again, I go back to working with partners to keep people safe if they are going to come out into the pubs, the bars, the licensed premises in Herefordshire, all across Herefordshire over the weekend. So we've been working really hard with all the licensing uh, team in local authority uh, to understand what the intelligence is and what people are telling us. We've had Save the Neighbourhood officers, licensing officers, problem solving hubs going on knocking on the doors of the licensee, licensed premises to find out exactly what their plans are because they're the people that can help and work with us. Yeah, we, we've uh, made sure that all those people who would ordinarily be banned from pubs remain banned and that they don't come into the city and you know we've robust them because this is about who is it's going to present the most risk to us and where is that most risk because most of the cities, most of the market towns, most of the pubs out in the rural areas will have worked really hard to get their businesses up, up and running. And we want to, of course, support that for, for the economy and, and for thriving communities. And uh, we are not here from a police perspective, you know, to, to, um, to go out and proactively uh, enforce social distancing measures. That's not our role. We are around, we will be on duty in, in some numbers, but what we are there to do is to respond, should it be required to any reports and any incidents, and to continue to work with the partners uh, and that, that, you know, that in, in includes putting the right people at the right places at the right time. And I'm confident that we'll have that in place. Some of, um, some, of, uh, some of the crime trends that we've seen during lockdown that hasn't gone down has been um, crimes in, in the privacy of people's own homes. The, the, the sad state of 2020 is that there are some people who can't call home their safe place, whether that be some vulnerable young people, whether it be... Um, uh, somebody who is subject to an abusive or controlling uh, relationship. Um, the, it feels that um, whilst it has gone up uh, overall, um, it, it, it's not a, the figures don't accurately reflect as to what really has been happening because of the nature of the 
hairdresser visits that have been happening, the, the pharmacy visit, the doctor visits, the whatever it were, where somebody might have a chance to disclose and seek help. And as lockdown releases, we, 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 we might see some more or further reports of, of those types of crime. Um, I'm just interested too in your, in your strategy, um, in, especially in a, a very rural county such as Herefordshire, because uh, it's outside the city, you know, the population is very spread out, uh, the infrastructure isn't always there, in how, as we start to get going again as a society, you carry on keeping those people who might not be safe in their own homes um, uh, safe, and indeed uh, bringing those who might seek to harm them uh, to justice. So obviously in terms of our safer, uh, our three priorities, our three main priorities, you know, we, we absolutely aim to make sure that people are safe, then that they feel safe. And I think that's really important is because quite often people are safe, they just don't feel it. And that's our challenge is to work with people to get that confidence, but also to make sure they're safe in their own homes and that when they go out and about, they're safe on the roads that they travel. So safe people and safe homes is really important to us. And to give you an example, all the way through, all of the stages of COVID so far, we've recognised that the key challenge for us was going to be about people in domestic um, situations and domestic abuse, vulnerability in people's homes, especially children who have not been able to go to school, who perhaps not been able to raise any concerns to school teachers. So everything that you've just said there, uh, said there, John. But we've met and we've set, we've set up with partners um, fortnightly meetings, uh, initially weekly meetings actually, just to make sure that we are coordinating everything we can to give everybody the opportunity that there are platforms, there are comms um, uh, platforms available to, for people to report things. Uh, and, and of course, you know, it's a reasonable excuse if somebody did need to, to leave their home. And thankfully, we haven't had too many of those. Um, so that's right across the county in, ter in terms of, uh, of that there. Now, of course, uh, you know, in terms of the wider crime uh, and criminals, um, criminals will commit crime irrespective of covid and lockdown and what we have seen in a rural county is those traveling criminals that would ordinarily come from perhaps on the fringes of wales into into uh, the west mercy police area and into herefordshire have not stopped so our rural crime has continued we've had some great operations and some fantastic arrests during covid and uh, you know it was really starting to build up a picture um, uh, uh, as to what people have done and, and, and how, that, how that's happening. So we continued with all the crime prevention work. We've just recently launched the, the farm packs under the Rural Crime Initiative. We've continued with the rural and business officers going out to, to relevant um, farms and, and uh, speaking to people. But that's in addition to uh, our licensing officers, you know, changing their tap, no, no nighttime economy, no licensing, but nevertheless, we've got vulnerable people and we need to go and protect them whether that's adult people or, or children and one of the key pieces as well has been kind of that look and feel of the towns and the cities that's often a good indication of crime and, and quality of life and we've had a, a big piece of work ongoing with the third sector um, uh, and linked into to the vulnerability around rough sleepers you know most of our rough sleepers have been housed the government funding will now continue until the end of march but that's a challenge for us here in the county to make sure that we can continue to keep them housed uh, and, and of course that we can we can support that whole piece of work to make sure that that, that places are safe and um, people can go about their business and feel safe. One of my uh, driving, um, one of the central parts of my police and crime plan and my drive to improve services in West Mercia is around the way we support victims and survivors of domestic abuse and, and other um, uh, other crimes such as that uh, and we already spend a, a chunk of money doing that and I'm very proud of that work but so we've been successful in recent days of uh, £340,000 for additional services. Tracy is it worth just saying as to what uh, what the benefit to the communities of Heritage will be of those additional monies and what that will mean for those that might need help that isn't currently getting it at the moment? Yeah, certainly. I mean, it's not, um, uh, you know, it's not my place here to sort of um, say that the government had done something, um, something good. But yes, we were very, very pleased to receive the additional funding. Um, obviously, for um, our services around domestic abuse um, and um, uh, uh, criminal exploitation, um, our services were going to struggle because a lot of the things they do were face to face. So the government funding has allowed them to be able to have extra laptops and um, extra abilities to be able to do to do um, things like this online and be able to see people. But 
but still, you know, maintain that contact without maintaining the physical contact. Um, and that has allowed us to roll that out all the way across Herefordshire as well. And um, so there's additional services there. If people need those services, um, it, the usual numbers um, would apply, um, but somebody will be there for you. Um, I think the other thing is around the um, community side of it. As we said earlier on, people in their communities now do know who their neighbours are. We will never be in a position where there will always be a police officer next door to the house where somebody is suffering domestic abuse, but there will be a neighbour next door and we would be encouraging people to continue that community spirit. You know who your neighbours are now, you know who your vulnerable people are now. If you see anything, just take five minutes. If it doesn't add up, then phone it into the police. The police will not um, be against people phoning things in that they see or hear that they think are not right. The, and that's an important part because the uh, the police are the public are the uh, professional just you know the professional uh, judges with the experience and the training to understand um, what needs uh, what needs to respond to and they they have processes and indeed that sachets very very neatly to a question that we've had come in from somebody watching um, Des asks why can't West Mercia police respond to each and every uh, report of crime. Um, into the operations room. So I suppose Des is getting to the point of the, the police get told lots of stuff. Why don't we see a uh, Why don't we see a uh, police car with lights and sirens going to going to every job type thing? Well, I think first of all, I mean, obviously, you know, significant amount of crime and incidents get reported through the operations control centre, uh, and as any organisation would, we have to prioritise each of those crimes in a graded system. Um, so uh, just because the information might not always be acted upon doesn't mean to say overtly so the members of the public knows it doesn't mean to say that we don't do something about it uh, and it's a really key point because of course we do respond to crimes uh, we might not always do a physical visit but we, we've got a, um, a public service desk that looks at crime and investigates crimes through, through telephone service as well but, but a key point you know I, I would always say to communities if you've got a piece of information just as the deputy PCC said there that information needs we need to know about it because each part of that information builds our intelligence picture and that gives us the chance to then be able to go and address you know we're listening we want to understand what's going on and we then need to address it in a very cohesive way so we don't always respond personally to every single crime and i don't think it's feasible that we can do that but we do have the bigger picture we've got the intelligence we are an intelligence-led organization and then we can pull that from our systems to be able to respond. And whether that's low level crime or actually all the way through to serious organized crime. And uh, some, of the, uh, some of the examples that I've seen as commissioner myself in terms of crime reports coming in and actually then those crime reports being used to, uh, to close the net on those that are doing it. So uh, we might get a report of somebody doing something in Gwent heading towards Herefordshire and that operation might then move to somebody being caught in Herefordshire but actually the person that reported it or the persons reporting it might be in another force area in that mm -hmm. case so um, part of uh, our message and you guys do do it through the uh, through social media and sometimes the, the regular media is, is is coming through to what the results were but um, with 10,000 crimes uh, 10,000 calls for service every every week into West Mercia it, uh, there wouldn't be enough pages on the uh, on the Hereford Times to uh, to cover all of them would there but I do know it's the focus that you've had in the county about ensuring that your local police teams for example are well connected with community groups such as parish councils giving them feedback as to as to what uh, what is happening um, whilst um, I mentioned it um, uh, around the roads um, obviously Sue you like everybody else will have seen um, a, a huge drop off in traffic in the early stages of lockdown and uh, you will have seen in recent weeks that traffic start to come up again. Um, we've seen um, uh, really good news that a lot less people have died on the road in recent times because of that, primarily because of that reduced number of traffic. But as traffic starts to get go again, going again, um, what's your plan around keeping our roads safe? Because too many people are dying or being seriously injured on the roads in Herefordshire uh, and indeed, uh, I know the chief is very keen. I'm very keen. It's one of the force priorities. It's in my police and crime plan. What does that look like on the ground um, in Herefordshire in terms of how that's going to be going to be brought to life? Yeah, safer roads absolutely are a key priority. And, and it, if, if I don't need the reminder every day, then actually once a year there's a road piece service at the cathedral which I attend, uh, and, and to see 
um, what, what, what I can only describe, you know, the families and, and uh, friends of people who have lost their lives on the road is, is, is really, uh, you know, not, a nice, not, not nice at all. And it does, does bring home, you know, to me, and I take that back to my staff, how important it is that we do enforce uh, everything around road safety every single day. And that, you know, we've had a recent speeding campaign. We know that speed is one of the, 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 the elements that will contribute towards uh, matters around road safety. It's right that we play our part in that. Uh, and we've just had a significant contribution from all of the teams around that. Yeah, we've got a current seatbelt campaign. Uh, again, you know, it's, a, it's about recognising we will be stopping people. We will be uh, speaking with them in terms of, you know, the, the, the education last week. But actually, this week, it's very much around the enforcement. So they're just two factors. But actually, from a road policing perspective, we've, we've set off in Herefordshire this year as part of the Safer Roads Initiative is to increase our, our uh, contributions to the campaigns and to road safety. And we've got an initiative called 20 for 20. So that's 20 things we really want to nail down. And this is exactly one of them. And one of the things that we have done is to say to all of our staff, you know, we need to, 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 to spread out and um, educate people around, you know, why you're you stopping. the seagulls in the background in your... You uh, can hear the seagulls. Yeah. The seagulls? You're not on the sea yeah, you're not on the seaside either. They're great. <laughs> And they've got babies, so they're extremely <laughs> noisy at the moment. Yes. Yeah, but we've, um, we very much have got, uh, as I say, um, in terms of the road safety campaigns, we get all officers involved. We've got some people on attachments uh, uh, within roads policing so that we can actually come back and spread them out to, to patrol teams. And it's not just about that. It's about making sure the safer neighbourhood teams are going out and working with their communities. Where are those areas? And you know yourself, PCC that you get complaints and we want to respond to those. Well, actually, you know, we, we shouldn't wait for you. We should be ahead of the game. We should be going out and doing that proactive activity. And we also know that we've got some further work to do with community um, sort of um, speed watch areas, etc. So we, we, we very much see uh, road safety as a key part. Uh, and of course, we work really um, closely with our local authority leads around the engineering of the roads. You know, we, we have got a, a traffic system coming through the city, for example. Most of the people who are coming through the city don't want to be here. Uh, we haven't got a bypass. It does bring extra traffic. And although people are going slow, uh, you know, at peak times of the day, that does also cause it to challenge. So we've got a lot of work on going around uh, safer roads. Uh, and as I say, working with our other partners as well. You never know, Sue. Um, uh, you might get a uh, you might get a bypass for the city uh, sometime soon. Uh, I, I like many people have uh, spent many an hour queuing through uh, the traffic uh, in the city. Uh, a, a bypass would definitely be a good thing. Uh, that links to uh, a question that we've also had in from a member of the public. I haven't got the, the person's name, um, but they they are very complimentary about the work of you and your, your uh, officers, and they refer to an incident that they were involved in where. Um, your officers uh, uh, were uh, very professional at a very critical time and sensitive and considerate as to how um, how they executed their duties and kept people safe. Um, but they go on to say uh, around um, when officers are out in uh, in their cars and on patrol, um, do they uh, also look at the built environment, the roads, and also uh, report things such as things like big potholes or or worn out uh, line markings, etc. Yeah, it's an interesting one because obviously yeah, it, can, it means about them keeping their eyes and, and ears open for, for all, the, um, all the factors that are on the roads, etc. But there is a routine. I mean, we also are supported by a traffic management advisor and actually only in the last week or two, you know, as part of uh, looking at COVID, uh, uh, the opening of cities, we get that traffic management advisor in, looking at cycle routes, what does that look like? Uh, and of course, you know, the, the, the white lines and potholes would be part of that, of that wider work. We've got a roads policing, um, a strategic roads policing plan, um, uh, uh, sorry, a strategic roads plan for the local authority, which we're very much connected into. So I think there are those routes available. And of course, you know, it, it, it is incumbent on each officer that if they do come across them, that they do report them into local authority. It, um, yeah, we've uh, the questions are coming in fast and furious now. Uh, now, Sue, uh, I think it was the uh, seagulls that uh, that got them. <laughs> um, uh, Sarah asks uh, the response to rural crime seems to be improving lately. Um, is this a long term investment? I know it's a portfolio you've held for for a while. 
Well, I do lead for rural crime across the force. Uh, I've done that now for about five years, and we we have really made so much progress in this. Um, but, uh, one from recognising policing perspective uh, and what we have, but also you know significant funding and contribution that you've given us, John. You know, in terms of really recognising uh, where you know where our resources are, how we can engage with people, how we can be visible. Um, I talked about problem solving, but a key factor as well is about that communication. So we've recently, um, in the last six months, we've got a, a, a rural crime team now across the force. There are 10 officers and I call them a team because I, I think they are a team, albeit there's two per policing area. And in, in Herefordshire, I've got uh, two. Um, they work absolutely flat out. They're doing some really good work, very much around cross-border criminality. And some of the work that we've, we've done, we can't quite share this week, but I've no doubt we will through our newsletters and our social media in the coming weeks. But we've really made some inroads into an, into an operation around cross-border criminals. So I'd like to say to the, member, to the person asking that question, the funding has been significant. It isn't just about that. It's about re, reshaping our, you know, our whole approach and recognising that huge parts of Herefordshire are rural. And we have a responsibility to make sure that rural communities are protected just as much as, as the urban areas. Uh, and I'm very confident that that, that approach will continue um, for the foreseeable future. The, um, and another one come in, so there's a, a flurry and uh, it's a comment and it says the, and it's from Helen, who says the 20 for 2020 initiative is a fantastic uh, idea. So whoever you, uh, whoever you primed uh, uh, with that uh, <laughs> comment, uh, it was worth the investment. And I didn't Tracy, prime it. <laughs> Tracy, you wanted to add something? I just wanted to add something actually to um, the comments around the rural crime um, in that um, one of the things that we've been doing as well is bringing um, the sort of cyber safety element and um, our first sort of uh, flagship event was in, um, was in Herefordshire actually and uh, it was excellent and we had a number of businesses come and they had some very um, uh, simple to follow training on how to keep their um, cyber um, uh, safety um, up to date. And a lot of those were sort of very small sort of farm businesses and um, and they were very appreciative of that. So we'll be rolling out more of that once we can um, once we can start that up again. Yeah, and actually, that's, yeah. Yeah, so that's a really good point, because we we um, we had a load of work in uh, in progress uh, to bring the the, uh, the rural crime focus that that's obviously the PCC's plan. Uh, at the middle of May, we were going to have a big launch event at our headquarters with all of our partners. Uh, and we had some really exciting opportunities there to, to bring people in and educate our staff as well in terms of some of the key priorities. And some of those small, you know, what might be considered to be small things like wildlife crime that, that officers wouldn't ordinarily get training on when they first joined the police. But we got responsibility to, to respond to those things. Unfortunately, COVID has put a stop to that, but we won't forget it. And at an appropriate time, we will pick up and, and continue to work with the partners. We um, we're going to come to uh, going to come to a close uh, in the moment, and um, I, I wanted to round off really by uh, recognising um, I think the uh, amazing challenge that the policing's had in 2020 uh, for the county, uh, whether it be the significant and long term flooding event through to um, the uh, ongoing health emergency, and I know your officers uh, will have uh, responded to those incidents, supporting their communities, being part of their communities, and they would have done it at a time that they're worried about their own health, they're worried about the health of their families and the like, as we all were. And uh, for me, um, uh, the impingement of our civil liberties is a huge test on our society, and uh, I think West Mercia Police and policing in Herefordshire reacted in exactly the way our public would want in that partnership uh, approach. So on behalf of the public, it is a big thank you um, for, uh, uh, for the work that they do. Um, our job is to be critical sometimes of, uh, of the actions of the police or, or inaction at times, but that doesn't mean I don't think uh, the vast majority of the public are very supportive of the policing mission. And I think that's been reinforced during the two major incidents in Herefordshire in, uh, in, in the first six months of 2020. And uh, I think it's a credit to yourself and the officers to the way uh, that that gets, that gets done. Because uh, for me, that's why British policing is as good as it is, because of the challenge that comes, uh, but also the, the way they react. It's, it's impressive to be part of. It is, very much so. Um, as I said, we're coming to an end now. Obviously, uh, Sue, just an opportunity for you to leave if there's anything you uh, just wanted to leave in the public's mind as we come 
to the end in your role as policing commander if there's uh, anything you just want to leave in their minds around how they how they keep safe as uh, as unlock uh, starts to happen and uh, summer hopefully carries on yeah john you, you made reference there to, to two significant challenges obviously with with flooding early in the year in covid now but of course we've had lots of other things uh, presented to us as well black lives matters uh, extinction rebellion protests you know we, we had 750 protesters uh, only a couple of weeks ago turn up in the hereford city center that's a challenge in terms of you know making sure social distance etc are all within that um, and of course you know one of the things that we're very alert to as well is, is young people especially are getting quite impatient and i know we're opening up, up uh, licensed premises etc with a change in the next phase on the 4th of July, but we're still very nervous around illegal raves, large gatherings of people. So all I would say is, uh, you know, a, a, um, a big plea out to communities really, you know, if you, if you have got any information or is there anything at all that you do see out in communities, you just don't feel seems right or looks right, then please report it into the police. We, we will listen. We will uh, obviously take that into account and we will, uh, take that as part of our intelligence picture as to how we respond. But in terms of moving forward, you know, I'm really proud of what we've achieved um, as a system really in Herefordshire because, you know, we have, uh, as I said earlier, unfortunately we have lost people, but we have relatively kept the county safe. Uh, we've still got some way to go. Uh, and, uh, you know, I really do urge communities to be responsible, to stay alert. Uh, and that's important as we go into this next phase uh, uh, in, in the weekend. A big thank you to everybody who's played their part. Um, I think uh, the, the uh, Tracy hit it on the head when she said, uh, you know, this is very much about community spirit. And we've shown that we've had lots of that, but, but we've got to continue and be patient and make sure that we do keep Herefordshire safe uh, for everybody. And, and for me, that's uh, the key part in this, in keeping the county safe. It's a great safe place to live, work and visit and, and playing our part in doing that is a really great thing. Um, I'd like to thank uh, those who have watched the live broadcast tonight and indeed taken part by submitting questions. Um, if we will be in South Worcestershire uh, tomorrow night, um, but if there, if there is anybody who had a question about policing or an issue in South, in Herefordshire, then please do submit it in the normal channel, either via our social media or via um, our website, and we will work with you to get an answer. Um, this uh, broadcast will be uh, published on our on our um, uh, social media and on our uh, Facebook page. Um, I've just been connected, corrected in my ear that um, it's not South Worcestershire tomorrow, it's uh, on Thursday. Um, uh, so if you're watching tomorrow, you'll be, uh, you'll be very early. Uh, but uh, <laughs> if you are from South Worcestershire and you want to, to, to submit a question, there's, there's still time. So uh, Sue and Tracy, thanks very much for joining us uh, tonight and thank you to those thank who are you. watching at home.